What's going on guys? This is Rob and we are back with the imposter, Batman the imposter. And this is the conclusion. We're wrapping the whole thing up. Uh, which you guys really seem to enjoy this. I mean, the videos perform somewhat well, but those of you guys who love, you guys were just really die hard about it. <laughs> and you really wanted to see how it ended. So here's the thing about this, right? Um, in the last video, we kind of ended things where Flanagan was kind of this guy, right? This rat catcher who just never really got any respect from anybody. And uh, the only real friend he thought he had was Batman simply because Batman had saved his life somewhere along the line. And so what ended up happening is that in a skirmish with Batman, that basically Flanagan was beaten, was beaten up, right? I mean, he was just kind of assaulted by, uh, by Batman. And that's where his tone begins to change because he doesn't understand why he was abused by somebody that he thought was a friend, right? Why he was beaten up by Batman from someone he thought was a friend. And the reality of this is that the Batman who saved him was, well, we can just call him Robert Pattinson, right? I mean, he looks just like him. So we can just say it was Robert Pattinson, Batman, uh, the person who beat him up was the imposter, but Flanagan doesn't know this, right? The only thing that he really offered to Pattinson's Batman is he basically said there's all kinds of sewer systems, and it basically revealed at one point in time uh, that the imposter Batman was basically using the sewer systems and essentially had a layer down there somewhere. And so what ends up happening is you basically have the partner of Blair who comes in and starts offering a more heavy-handed interrogation, right? Kind of like a, a good cop, bad cop sort of situation. And what this does is it leads to the two of them, or really to, to Flanagan himself, kind of mentally breaking just due to the fact that his life has just really been in the tanker for quite some time. He ultimately takes the gun of Blair's partner and then offs himself. And so at that point, you switch over to Bruce having his conversation with his therapist. And it's one of those things where he was talking about Flanagan having this, this making this comment about uh, there being like a hideout in the sewer somewhere or something along those lines. Putting two and two together, he realizes it's the imposter he was referencing to and that ultimately uh, Flanagan has said that he said it was behind a waterfall, right? And then ultimately Bruce Wayne kind of deciphering and looking through all these things says, well, there's there's basically 11 vertical drops in the sewer system. One of them will lead me to the imposter. And he says, I'm going to go down there. And what's really interesting is the therapist doesn't really care so much about Batman or about Bruce Wayne tracking down the imposter. What she cares about is Bruce Wayne's mental health. And she says, you lit a fuse with the Gotham City Police Department tonight when you launched an attack on them in order to get your hands on Flanagan, right? It's, it's only a matter of time before it blows up. And then ultimately, Bruce doesn't really care. He just kind of ignores that and he's like i had to get to flanagan i had to hurt her i had to assault detective blair in order to uh, in order to get the information that i needed and that's something that really seems to weigh on him right this idea that he had to go after the woman that he cares about and had to physically assault her in order to get to flanagan it's really interesting because one of the things that goes on with this version of bruce wayne and this alternate reality is that he seems very emotionless when the reality is he's exceedingly emotional and so following that you basically go directly into uh into his whole really investigating the sewer systems and then ultimately tracking down this waterfall and then essentially stumbling across the base of the imposter. Now, the reality is he's been going at this for hours and this is really like the last one, which basically seems to be, uh, well, I mean... It seems to be pay dirt, to be honest, <laughs> right? He got exactly what he was looking for. He manages to pick a lock and essentially start looking through or rummaging through the various weapons this guy has at his disposal, only to find out or only to have the imposter basically show up behind him and a fight breaks out between the two of them. Now, this fight is really, really interesting because whenever we think of Bruce Wayne fighting his Batman in the main DC universe, he's Batman, right? So he's able to like almost always overcome whatever foe he's facing off against, uh, unless we're talking about Earth 2 Batman and then he blew himself up. But the thing about this is that in, in this story, it's really designed to give us this depiction of Bruce Wayne, who's very unpolished, who's very, very basic, who doesn't really have the kind of skills and things that you would expect to see him have. And so the result of this is that because he's not quite at the Bruce Wayne that we normally expect, when this fight goes on, you would expect him to come out on top. But what he basically says is they end up, you know, falling into the water and, and so on and so forth, is he says, this guy's fast, right? And this guy's strong, which basically means he's just going to have to hit him more. He can't overpower him with strength. So it's basically going to have to turn into kind of of a, a war of attrition. But the reality here is that Bruce Wayne can't really gain the upper hand. What ends up happening is that in the midst of this fight, suddenly these cops all basically show up. And that's when Bruce realizes, okay, this had to have been some kind of a setup. This person had to have either informed the cops or been a cop or something like that in order to, in order to basically orchestrate an assault in such a way to where he could show up as the imposter Batman, he could fight me. And then while I, while this is basically a distraction, the cops appear in an effort to basically, you know, capture me and get me out of there. 
And so what's really kind of nuts is that, of course, he uses a flashbang, of course, and is able to essentially make his escape and then ends up on a city street. And because of the fact that he's injured, he ends up just kind of making his way, getting to where he can, when he can, and so on and so forth. And then, of course, recovers enough in order to use the various, uh, you know, ropes and whatnot that are around Gotham City in order to get back here. But again, he's still being chased. Once the cops realize he's there, there's a helicopter, all kinds of stuff. And then ultimately, he is basically tracked down by Detective Blair. And then once Blair gets to where he is and then begins the process of like unmasking him to find out what's going on, she realizes that it's Bruce Wayne. Now, something to understand here with this is that while Blair sees this in one part, at least in terms of her professional part, as, okay, Bruce Wayne is the Batman. The Batman has basically been killing people as far as we're aware. We have to arrest this guy. On a more deeper level and on a personal level, it's a massive betrayal. It's a huge betrayal here because the man she loved physically assaulted her, right? And because of that, it's one of those things where that's why you see her crying, right? Because it's literally like, I care about Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne assaulted me, right? Which means Bruce Wayne never cared about me in the first place. Now, he does try to plead his case in saying like, Batman doesn't kill. Batman does not kill people. The imposter is the one who's dressing up as me and killing people. And in the end, where he's just kind of like, he basically goes to leave, she initially says like, no, you're under arrest. And that's when the question is like, either you can put me down or I can leave, but there's no other option. If I am off the street, you're never going to catch the imposter Batman and the imposter is going to kill people. So let me go so I can stop this guy and then we'll basically call it a day. And so what this does is it leads to a bit of a story where he still has the shotgun in his possession that he had originally taken from the imposter. He kind of goes through and starts analyzing it and says, okay, so here's the thing. This gun basically has a squid on it. And he tells us the story of a guy named Lawrence Lohman, that Lawrence Lohman wanted to be a kingpin, that he was the son of a Chinese real estate magnate and he came to Gotham City looking to take over. The problem is that, as you guys know from reading Batman comics, unless you're somebody like the Joker or someone like that, that people just know not to mess with just because of either how crazy you are or if you're the Penguin, how much power you have, that Loman didn't know that. And he basically started calling himself the Squid and then branded every, sing every single thing he had with the Squid insignia, not realizing it was only a matter of time before somebody tracked him down. Ultimately, they did, and then ultimately, Loman was basically put away. But before that happened, there was a shipping manifest that basically documented all these weapons, these pistols, 450 of them in fact, that were being sent to Gotham City. And that what he realizes, or at least what Bruce realizes, is that each one was safely locked away by, by the Gotham City Police Department in their evidence room. But he found a gun that was basically branded by the squid in the, the lair of the imposter Batman. And that's when Batman realizes the imposter is a cop, right? This guy's trained, he has access to the prison lockup, he's got motive to kill the people who have been killed so far, and the cause for why they were killed, right? The judge in that instance, and basically blame it all on Batman. The guy's a cop who is essentially killing criminals that were seemingly let out onto the street for any number of reasons, and he's gonna pin it all on Batman in order to make sure that he gets away scot-free. It's a pretty genius concept because no one really knows what's going on with Batman. And so of course he ends up basically visiting Blair and then tells her the person's a cop. Like the, the imposter is a cop. They have access to the prison lockup. I'm not saying it's you, I'm just saying it's a cop. So here's what you need to do. You need to go and, and basically visit the morgue or any number of those those scenarios, you need to dust people's fingerprints. And then you need to compare those fingerprints to the murder weapon. And then in turn, that's when you will find out who the cop is. That's when you'll find out who that person is. Batman, of course, can't break into the prison or into the police station and do all that himself. Otherwise, I'm sure he would. In the main DC universe, he would. But, you know, I'm not necessarily sure he would here in this particular universe. But the thing about this is that kind of following Blair to a degree, and even this conversation uh, that she has with Bruce Wayne, is one of these things where she basically confirms like, you know, yes, like your suspicions about this being a cop was true. I don't know exactly who it is, but she says like the prints that I took, they're in a safe place. And it's only a matter of time before those prints are basically um, identified and we could tell you exactly who this person is. And at the very least, verify that there is an imposter Batman pretending to be you and going around and killing people. But before that can happen, there's a red dot, basically a sniper that's aiming for Blair and then essentially shoots her. Now she doesn't die, right? She's basically alive here. She's just, you know, severely injured. And of course, where Batman ends up going to save her, the imposter arrives on the scene, manages to shoot Batman or at least injure him enough to where he's temporarily out of commission and then goes to kill Blair. And so of course a fight breaks out yet again between these two, or at least not necessarily a big, huge drawn out fight, but enough where Batman's able to get a Batarang off and basically injure the imposter before he can kill Blair, basically stabbing him, uh, stabbing him in the eye, which is kind of nuts. His mask ends up coming off and that's when you discover the imposter Batman is actually the partner of Blair, right? Now we don't really know exactly what his motivation is, but he does explain explain it here, right? He basically spills the beans in this whole thing and essentially saying that with Batman, right? With everything going on with him, the reason why this was done is because
because of the fact that with with Bruce Wayne or he doesn't really know he's Bruce Wayne but with Batman operating in such a way to where he basically rounds up criminals and then drops them off in the you know at the police station who in turn basically arrest these guys that between that and between the crooked judges that it was only a matter of time before somebody came asking questions and basically revealed that these guys were denied due process that Batman doesn't have the authority or the right to operate as a vigilante round up criminals and then drop them off at the police station and then let the police take it from there because the reality is at least according to how this law is kind of being depicted here the police did not not witness the commission of a crime and there's no other witnesses to those crimes aside from Batman but Batman's a vigilante and so the question is if person A is breaking the law and in doing so witnesses person B breaking the law and then hands person B over to the police does that in turn allow person B to be arrested but the argument was at least in the courts anyway Batman denied them due process and so because he had assaulted them he never read them Miranda rights or anything along those lines and then in turn you had corrupt uh, corrupt members of the uh, judicial system that basically all those convictions were overturned and so this guy is blaming Batman as well as the broken judicial system for how things turned out his intention was to track down all these criminals who were released kill them all and then blame it on Batman and then basically walk away from there that even if Bruce Wayne died somewhere along the line because Batman is so ambiguous and because no one really understands his motives because Commissioner Gordon's not there anymore and even if Commissioner Gordon was still here had he not been run out of town his word wouldn't necessarily be trusted because of his previous actions and because he was forced out of town that ultimately people would only really see one Batman but they would still assume it was the same person and that once this guy was done he could just simply walk away from the Batman mantle and everybody would just assume Batman's gone now and that's basically it his mission completed and so because of that of course this guy you know is basically killed you know when he's knocked off the building falls to his death and that's basically the end of him and then in turn you end up having this kind of conversation between Blair and Bruce Wayne that where Blair is ready to arrest him and take him in for the things that he'd done he says okay like I had rules I thought they'd basically be enough I was wrong but he then he asked her the question do you think that Gotham will actually be better off without me if you believe Gotham City will be better off without me here operating as this Batman then arrest me take me in the the billionaire here it'll basically be a day and there'll no be there won't be any more Batman right your career will be made you'll be set for life and so on and so forth he says but if there is a part of you that believes that that the city of Gotham will be worse off without me then you have to let me leave you have to let me go you can't you can't make me stay here because you'll be basically making the city worse and in the end Blair lets him go and it's really really cool the way that it's done because in the aftermath of all this while the the therapist of you know Leslie Tompkins could have you know easily handed Bruce Wayne over to the cops ultimately she didn't and Bruce Wayne knew she wouldn't do it the loyalty between the two of them and her being able to understand at least to some degree how he got to where he is and why he does what he does in a lot of ways it's really her kind of justifying it and saying that Gotham City really is better with Batman here Batman can operate within a way that people just or at least the cops themselves just normally can't is it going to take a bit of finessing and is he going to kind of have to, have to like get his act together and operate in a better way yeah definitely but in time Batman won't necessarily become somebody people trust but he'll become something that the judicial system actually begins to build around and work around not only that of course the cop or the, the partner of Blair is basically implicated as like the false Batman and so on and so forth and that's essentially it but nonetheless it's one of these things where the story itself is phenomenally done because the last little tidbit we get is basically the ventriloquist right we had talked about him earlier in the stories this guy who ends up going on to become the ventriloquist right everything that he hated about his life and every ounce of uh, control that he wanted to have is all kind of manifested in the form of like his ventriloquist doll but instead of becoming the villain that we know there was a previous point in time when he had encountered Batman and Batman had actually given him the number of Leslie Tompkins and said you need to go visit her right you need help the things that you're going through are going to make you a dangerous person you're going to end up hurting people I know that's not what you want to do so you need to go and contact her and so of course basically giving him this kind of note that doesn't have anything but the Batman symbol on it Leslie knows what's going on which is a great concept because instead of Leslie being a medical Medical nurse like she is in the main DC universe albeit with another part of, uh, of, of uh, therapy going on there that instead she's actually a person who's here that instead of Batman like pummeling these criminals beating them up you know and then throwing them in jail so they can only escape let, uh, yet again he actually hands them over to her so she can basically study them diagnose them help them overcome the problems that they're dealing with and then in turn return to society as productive members it's a genius idea it kind of turns the nature of the Batman mythos on its head a little bit nonetheless uh 
uh, that's it, guys. This is the end of the story. I loved it. It's phenomenal. It's probably one of the best Batman stories that I think I've read in a long, long time. And I'm not even going to lie. The alternate reality Batman stories are just ridiculously enjoyable. I enjoy those more than I enjoy the main Batman stories. It's just, it's nuts. And it's, it's, it's great. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. Thank you all for watching. And I will catch you all later. Peace.